Sitting on the banks of the Ohio River, Louisville, Kentucky is a cultural intersection between North and South. There are few places in America where the country's historic racial tensions are more obvious. And for the past year, it has been a focal point for Black Lives Matter campaigners and their enemies. Once proud of being the home of Darby and Muhammad Ali, the city is now identified as the place where 26-year-old Breonna Taylor was shot and killed by police. One year on, and I've come to meet some people who say, it's time to return to the streets. Hello. Hello. Nice Hi, to meet Magnus. You. Nice to meet you. Venus. Yeah, hey, Zach. How are you? I'm good. So, what do we do today? Uh, today we're out for the year anniversary of Brian Taylor's murder by Louisville PD. We're out here doing security for the event. We're working directly with the organizers today. Should be not expecting anything crazy to happen, but you know, it's it's Louisville. Crazy things kind of do happen. So. Magnus is a self-described anarchist with ties to the militia group, the UPG, the United Pharaohs Guard, and the anti-establishment Boogaloo Boys Group. So I'm seeing you with the gear and the rifle and you're talking about security. What do these people need the security for? There's been several instances of either right-wing groups or sometimes just random people that have come down. They've tried to start fights. There, there's been a lot of altercations in between people. And also Louisville PD has kind of had a history of being a little hands-on with the protesters being way too physical, way too aggressive. And that kind of stopped after UPG, the group that I'm here with, started showing up to these events armed. And ever since, things have kind of more mellowed out with the police. They're not as willing to engage upon the processors like that. The UPG that you're calling, is it more like defined as the mainstream to a militia or more like a it's, it's it's generally kind of more free form than that. UP, like I'm not personally part of UPG, I'm just here with them, but they're more organized like a militia, but they do have people like me that will come in, out, in and out that are friendly with them and will work with them, so. Um, and obviously there are law enforcement officials that are responsible for the security. How do they feel about normal civilians just taking to the streets with um, rifles? On their I'm, backs. I'm assuming they're not, they're publicly okay with it because they have to because of the Second Amendment, but I'm, I'm pretty sure privately they're a little upset that we're here, which is okay, you know, partially the point. So, Any escalation that you expect today? Uh, probably not. I, I expect today just because of how many people are going to be here and just kind of like nobody wants to crash a vigil. It's kind of just, it's not good taste, but, but you never know. You never, like nowadays, I've gone to events that seemed like they were going to be perfectly peaceful and it turned insane, and I've gone to events that everyone said was going to be a riot and madness and there was National Guard there and everything and nothing happened, so... Magnus is meeting with other members of the militia. Yeah, so this is Jefferson, this is Liberty, and then... Fifth is down there, sixth here, so that pretty much makes it pretty much so that's going to be six in Liberty, six in Jeff. I can take six in Liberty. So, yeah, and then we'll just test one more test, one more test. Let's go, Skipper. Cool. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Oh, that's where I'll be. All right. Cool. I can hear you. Can you hear me? After taking his instructions, Magnus dispatches to his corner where he's supposed to stand guard. All right. I guess I'm with y'all. The movement on the left has gradually grown in momentum here, and so too has the presence from the right. Fire! Fire! Militia groups in America believe they are legal and legitimate under the Second Amendment. And in Louisville, at least eight active militia have been identified. They range from far right to far left. Anti-government groups, constitutional militia and an all-black militia have all been actively part of protests here. And sometimes they resulted in serious injury, even death. The deadly shooting in Louisville, Kentucky. Police now investigating after one person was shot dead at a Black Lives Matter rally yesterday.
Are you guys all part of the same ideology? What is it? Yeah, so the, the general movement is kind of just a broad anti-government movement, more libertarian, more Second Amendment, more anti-police, anti-government, kind of anti-federal sort of movement. And we've all kind of popped up over the last year and kind of find homes in each other and over all the events that have kind of happened and trying to find our place in it and try to be useful to people as much as we can. There is always violence at BLM protests or left-wing protests. Do you think those arguments are justified? I think, so. yeah, obviously, you know, there are cases. You can't deny there are cases. But I do find, because I, I, I felt that way myself until I started going to these events, a lot of the times the police instigate it more than people are realizing. And they kind of throw the first punch and then play the victim afterwards. And that's kind of part, like, partly the reason why we're here is to prevent that from ever happening. The UPG have heard of an incident, someone who may have come to intimidate protesters. Militia members are immediately dispatched to the scene. Remember a safe line. Good. Have a great day. Safe line. Okay, have a great day. Though. Today's Change not the everything. Day. There will be peace. Have a great Soon. day. Thank you all. What do you think about the police? Not the biggest of fans. Um, I think that, especially recently in America, they pretty much find a way to upset every single group. They upset gun owners, they upset minority communities, they upset, you know, churches, pick at anything, especially over the lockdowns. They've kind of overstepped their bounds more and more. A lot of the good police officers, quote unquote, have quit. A lot of the newer guys are, are cowboys, for lack of a better term. They like to start things, they like to get into fights, they like to come to these protests, and they think that they're not being super antagonistic, but from their body language, from how they speak to people, how they go after people, they cause nothing but problems. African Americans are protesting against injustice towards African Americans, but the guys that are protecting security for them are mostly white, you yourself. Yes. Is, is, isn't it weird for them or for you? No, because that, that, that kind of goes to the idea of weaponizing your privilege. Like, there, you know, obviously we do, there are Af you know, African American individuals here that are armed and stuff like that, but they usually get treated infinitely different and much more poorly by the police than someone like us. So we're kind of buffering between that. We're kind of using that detail that, so that the cops can't come here and with these people. But the racial tensions here run deep, even between supposed allies. No disrespect, but y'all white. This is not about to happen. You ain't about to be in front of this. So stay out to the side. Excuse me, sir. Can you step over to the side? Sir, can you? No, this is unorchestrated and unstructured. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating, but I get it because you got to keep in mind that like we, we've just gone through a year of, of Proud Boys and, you know, Black Lives Matter protesters getting fist fights in the streets and people have been shot. People have been killed. People pulled guns on each other. They've run each other over with cars. So like this, I understand the suspicion. I don't get offended by it. It's obviously frustrating, but I, I don't never get offended by it. Would you get into a gunfight with the Proud Boys? If, if they if there ever came an instance where there was like not even just like an altercation, but it came down to a gunfight where they decided to antagonistically just start shooting, then that's what it ends up being. We hope it never comes to that. I don't want to hurt anybody. Brianna Taylor's death didn't attract nationwide attention at first, but the killing of George Floyd highlighted the fate of the 26-year-old woman. Taylor was shot by police who did not identify themselves after entering her apartment in what would later emerge as a budget drugs raid. So far, calls for justice, which most see as the officers responsible being charged, have not been answered. Justin Blake is the uncle of Jacob Blake, who was shot seven times by police in front of his children last year in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Do you think it's a systemic uh, discrimination against the black people in this country? Oh, there's no question. I think with the, ex the president that just left office, uh, fired up uh, people that were doing things behind the scenes that felt 
uh, aggressive enough to go forward because of the president speaking in the ways he was whistleblowing and everything else. So people were more avert, avert in their actions. We need that rip out of uh, society so we can move forward. We can't make friends with somebody who's trying to kill you. How do you overcome that level of distrust amongst the African-Americans towards the state, towards the police, towards the system? Well, basically, the way we can overcome as a people is to just have unity. Uh, Haitians, Jamaicans, African descendants, uh, Ghanaians, if we all come together, we don't have to worry about much. So it's within us now to come forward in 2021 and show unity. Is this a war of two races in one country? Well, I wouldn't say a war of two races. It's um, the continuation and the perpetuation of the Civil War. The people who ran up there on D.C. were the great-grandchildren of people that fought on the other side of the Civil War. So we must squash that, be done with that war, and move forward. Cleanse ourselves of its racist tendons and move forward. The Black Lives Matter movement have also been accused of violence and looting and rioting. Do you think that casts some doubts over the organization or over your arguments? Well, I think that's ridiculous. You got, just like in here in Louisville, they murdered a woman. Now they're trying to pass in their uh, state house a bill that says if you taunt a police officer or say anything wrong to a police officer, that's breaking the law. Are you serious? They're putting more laws on us while they run free murdering and maiming our citizens. Stop it. We're not going to have it. It's 2021, we can see clearly, and we're demanding justice. So you're saying basically that since there's injustice towards us, then the rioting is justified? To a certain extent, yeah. Hell yeah. I think this country was built on slavery. We're the richest country in the world, yet we don't reap the benefits as African descendants. Yeah, they're lucky it's just rioting. It's, people are angry, and they have the right to be. We've been under suppression and depression and everything else you can name for over 400 years. So do you think it could even go further if there's further injustice? Well, I think everybody should put their seatbelts on and see what 21, 2021 has for install. W what could happen? Well, justice is going to happen. How we get there, we don't know. But people aren't going to sit down and we're not going to take tolerate it anymore. With or without violence? Everything's on the table. When you go to war, we're at war. Everything's on the table. People here say inequality is as prevalent as ever. As the police officer accused over George Floyd's death goes on trial in Minneapolis, Louisville is also knee-deep in the debate over police reform. And America might be bracing for another summer of upheaval.